It's not complicated. It's not complicated. Um, whenever we bring up the whole, you know, what's happening with Israel, Palestine, people always say, it's complicated, it's hard, it's very difficult to talk about because, and pretty much forever, for as long as I've been knowing this conflict from the days of the PLO with Yasser Arafat, I was like, no, it's not complicated. When you look at things through a real lens, you see, Within an ideal lens, a utopia lens, it is complicated, very complicated. But if you look at it through reality and how the real world works, it's not complicated. And I'll explain to you the difference between like the ideal world and the real world. Because we don't live in, in an ideal world, we live in the real world. But all of this stuff started with how the state was created. That's how it all started. And it's really your boy, I believe, Harry Truman of his U.S. presidents who pretty much sets things in motion. So again, I don't want to read too much in this, but just the key points. So December 1947, United Nations adopts a resolution 181 um, that would divide Great Britain's former Palestine mandate into Jewish and Arab states in May 1948 when the British mandate was scheduled to end. And just a little addition, Despite growing conflicts between Palestinian Arabs and Palestinian Jews, and despite the Department of State's endorsement of a trusteeship, Truman ultimately decided to recognize the state of Israel. You see, you hear a lot of, well, this point of view, that point of view. You have to think about it real, in real terms. And this, this is the best way to dis dis describe it. You see, in an ideal world, that is... The Jewish people say, no, that is our ancestral home. We were displaced due to the horrors of the Holocaust. We needed to find a home in the aftermath of World War II. It would make sense for us to be given our ancestral home. And then you can then talk about, well, people, there are people who are already staying in that ancestral home, but then this is really ancestral home, but there are people already there. So you know what? Let's try to find a compromise of the people who are already there and this being your ancestral home and you people being displaced. That's in an ideal world. We don't live in an ideal world, we live in the real world. And in the real world, I like to call this, it's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. It's about conquering. It's about dominating. It's about full control. Because yes, in a sense, the people of Israel, the Jewish people are like, oh, no, no, this is our ancestral home and we, f and we feel that we have claimed that land. That's what many people would say. But the reality of the matter is, in the world we live in, it's about all or, or nothing. So this is the best way to ex explain it. It's like you have a house. In the real world and how the world worked, specifically engineered and pioneered by the likes of U.S., and the UK was, oh, it's my house. Or I'm, I'm coming to take your house. But it's my house. I've got the bigger guns. I've got the bigger web weaponry. I'm taking this house. Feel free to fight me, but I've got the bigger guns and the bigger weaponry. That's what happened with Australia. That's what happened with South Africa. That's what happened to most of Africa. And that's what the Americans did to the Native Americans. Native Americans, that's... So for America who said that, well, you know, <laughs> this is their land, but... Why isn't there a compromise between you guys and the Native Americans? You literally went to the Native Americans' land and literally murdered all of them. <laughs> Pretty much had to kill literally millions of them and took over the, all over the land that was theirs before you got there. So my thing is that why is it okay for you to use the all or nothing rule, but it's not right in this instance? Because in this instance, how it should work in the real world is, okay, you want that land, fight for it and take everything. I don't believe in this two-state rule or where I have this part and this part. No, it's all or nothing because that is just how it, it works in the real world. So all these years, they've been negotiating, 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 and negotiating. You're wasting time. You're wasting time because how the real world works is it's conquer. It's all or nothing. So either you take everything or you take nothing. So how it should have happened is, okay, Israel, you want it, fight for it and take everything. 
<laughs> but what you know have okay, we're gonna take this, but then have more, and then have more, and then have more, and that's the reality that we now live in. Because the reality of the matter is Israel is backed by America. And what is America? America is the modern day Rome. They are the world super superpower. And because they are backed by America, it is what it, what, what it is. It like so. For and 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 this was the even the key thing. I remember um, this was years ago. This was back in the nineties. And then, like, I said to my mom that, like, my mom, like, why do um, these people in Israel? Why do they just keep on taking more and more and more? And why do they keep treating these Palestinians so badly? Where they just keep on encroaching, encroaching, and encroaching? And my mom, who's very religious, my mom said, "Well, you know, you know, they're God's people." They're God's people. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> and what and the reason why Netanyahu has been able to get away with the stuff for so long is Holocaust, they're God's people, and backing of America. With all those things, people have been too afraid to be fully critical up until the point we've reached now where you're not taking the piss. For so long, you always had the benefit of the doubt. You're God's people. This is the ancestral home. Look at what happened to, to them um, at the Holocaust. They have been a persecuted people for hundreds and hundreds of, of years. Give them some. So they always had the sympathy votes. Always had the sympathy votes. And you're backed by the world superpower. So with all those things, it was very easy for Israel to do whatever they wanted. And for so long, they did whatever they wanted. Because what we're not going to do is say that everything happened because of October 7th. October 7th was, was a horrible thing, horrible thing that happened. But my reaction to October 7th wasn't, man, what a horrible thing that happened, what the heck? My reaction to that was that this is yet another escalation of this conflict. And man, you guys, you're going to feel retaliation by a state that is backed by the world superpower. So hope you're ready for the retaliation because now these guys now have grounds to re retaliate. Well, it didn't start with October 7th. This started a long time ago. And as I pointed out, it started in the 40s when the state was created because the way it was created was wrong. It was completely wrong how it was created. And both America, but specifically the UK, they know that that moment in time, what, that is where everything went wrong. How it was created and the pressure they felt from the Zionist movement and the pressure they felt of trying to create this state that is where everything started. Which is why I just said it's it's not complicated. If you do your research, it's simple. And that's what I want to say in this, in this video. I almost forgot. We're, we're, here to, we're here to talk. If you have any issues with this, if anything I've said is wrong, you disagree, or I have false information, please comment below. Because I want to just say, but my, my bad, I was wrong. My research was wrong, I was wrong. Or, actually, no, I disagree. I was actually right. So please, if anything I said was wrong, please feel free to comment below and I'll be happy to respond. Because I'm a man of logic. I have never tweeted free Palestine. I've never I've never gone to a rally where it's like, Palestine free, Palestine free. No, like, I've just not done that. I have my views on it, that the present people are getting screwed over, but that's not my viewpoints. I'm not this kind of, yeah, well, I'm a man of logic. I look at stuff and okay, what is the logical reality here? Let me absorb the information, take a step up, okay, what's happening here? And for me, which is why I use that analogy, how the world works is for the Palestinians, they're, they're on that land now. Do not use the um, example of it's my ancestral home, no. The way this world works, there, you have no claim to anywhere. If you want something, you fight for it. That's what the Americans did. That's what um, the, um, Br the British did. For the Native Americans, that is the ancestral home. <laughs> and the Americans just came, oh, we know it's your ancestral home. We're just going to kill all of you and take it. <laughs> so the way the world works is there is no rightful place. It is wrongful place. The way the world has operated in reality is it's about my wrongful place. For, and almost was like, what, what, what's it called? L look at the influence of Africa. Why am I speaking English? 
Because the country I'm from in Nigeria was colonized by England. And they enforced their religion upon us, enforced the language upon us, enforced the different values upon us. Even the, the name, bro, the name of Nigeria, the name was coined by this random dude called Lugard and, his, and some random chick, which was his wife. So a random chick came up with the name of Nigeria. That is just how much influence you had on a place that wasn't your own. So my thing is... Um, That that because the issue with Netanyahu anyhow is this this is how you've messed up. You have the sympathy vote. Wrongfully, I feel. Wrongfully. Because let's talk about the same sympathy votes real quick. Look about to Netanyahu. You've you always had the sympathy vote. The Holocaust, the Holocaust, the Holocaust, the Holocaust. And for so long, again, for me, when I was looking at the country through the 90s to the two 2000s, it was always that. <clears throat> remember what happened to these guys in World War II. And I remember being taken to museums and seeing the horrible things that the Nazis did to the Jews. You know, being picked up in trucks, dumped like cattle in so um, um, graves, open graves. It was messed up. So many people were afraid to say anything about this because... This is the these are the Holocaust guys, Holocaust survivors, Holocaust survivors, Holocaust survivors. So you completely ignored anything about the Palestinians and Israel. You pretty much used that sympathy vote, and you exploited that sympathy vote of like we can do anything we want because no one's going to say anything based off of the Holocaust. And you know why? The media fed us a lie that the Holocaust was the worst crime in human history which is a lie. The Holocaust is one of the worst crimes in human history. The key thing, it is not the worst. It is one of the worst. One of the worst. Go look at what the Japanese did to the Chinese. That's what, as I would have made it, go just read up on what the Japanese did to the Chinese. But let's, let's look and go in, in deeper. Have you heard of slavery? Have you heard of slavery? You go into someone's house, you kidnap them, put them in chains, take them to a foreign land, and make them work for you for 400 years. No pay, crap housing. You'd say that they are three-fifths of a man. You literally denote them and treat them as property. They were property. So you had a group of people who were property to you for 400 years. Now, I'm not here to do oppression Olympics, I'm not. Because that is a futile exercise. But if we want to keep it a stack, and we just want to be completely real, what's happened to Africans who were stolen from their home and taken to America for 400 years, and what they've had to endure? It is mind-boggling. And the fact is that because it's happened so long ago, we, we don't know all the stories that happened. Just use your logic. They were seen as property. So you could do anything you wanted to do because they're property. Bro, I can take my table and just throw my table. The kind of things I've done to my chair or to my, to my table, that is what they were. So the reality is there are several atrocities, but the, I never got taught slavery in school. So in my school in Nigeria, or when, or when I moved to England, I was taught about the Holocaust. I never thought about, about slavery. I had to read, I had to watch films about slavery. The first time I knew about slavery and what happened was watching Roots. And then watching films and then doing more research. It was never taught to me in the school system that was in either in Nigeria or in England. And now that is a failure of that school system or history is written by the conquerors, not the conquered. So, and the issue you have here is you're, you're losing the, the, the sympathy votes. Because for so long, it's Israel. <clears throat> but now guys are like, hang on. Yes, what happened to people was horrible. It was horrible. One, not the worst, but it was one of the worst crimes in history. But I'm sorry, that sympathy vote is out the window because you are the degree to which you are treating the Palestinians like trash and how you are completely ignoring international law. You are spitting in the face of all of the values and human rights values of the UN. 
No, that sympathy vote no, no, no longer works. You know, it's it's no it's no longer works. Um, because you see, the reality here is, this is a problem that America and the UK created. This is a problem that the I was about to say United, and I think I remember I already did my my previous video. United Nations is a is a bomb organization. It's a it's it's a trash organization. It's garbage. The UN doesn't exist. It's America and the UK. It's about the it's about the leading world powers. The UN is just a front to say, oh yes, we are really democratic and everything. Oh really? How come no African nation has veto power, and only four or five nations have veto power? Hmm, sure. So this was a problem that America and the UK created. And they're the only ones that have to fix it. But things have gotten so far and so out of hand. And see, this is this, this the reality of the matter here. And people may not like this. It's right to matter. Either, and, <laughs> it's, you know what? It's messed up. So, because the right to matter here is that let Israel take everything. I believe it's all or nothing. Either Palestine, either the, um, Palestine and the Palestinians control the entire area or Israel controls the entire area. Now, if Israel controls the entire area, we now know what's going to happen. Because if you know your geography and look at the map, look at all of the countries that are surrounding Israel. Look at all the countries that are surrounding Israel. And based on everything that has happened, there is going to be a retaliation. So again, which is how I said in this video, this started with what happened in the 40s. This cannot, there, can, there is no resolution to this. Because when you bring in religion, the ancestral home, and when you just look at how much stuff has happened, there is no resolving this. There isn't. <laughs> so I, I remember at some point I said, you know what? No, this is a waste of time. There is no resolution here. Because we've now reached a point of no return. This is, it's, it's a point of no re re return now. But again, guys, you do your research. Again, you may, may look at this video and say, oh my gosh, you're bogus. What you're saying is trash. What you're saying is, is crazy. But when you do your research and you just look at it through logical means, but logical means, but through reality means. See, what, I think, what makes it complicated is if you think we live in an ideal world and we live in a fair world. If we live in an ideal world, this is, this is very complicated. It is. But America and the British Empire have showed us that we don't live in an ideal world. We live in a world about all or nothing, conquering, control, power, colonialism. <laughs> so if we live in that world, you, if you want any piece of land, don't say, well, I only want this part or this part. No, you, you take everything. When, America, when the Americans went into um, the land of America, we're like, okay, the Native Americans you'll have here, we have no, we are here to take everything. Oh yeah, we'll just give you Nevada and Las Vegas. We'll give you that, but 99% of everything is ours. That's, that's right. That's, those are my thoughts on this, man.